Hey, I, I don't have a lot of time, but I just wanted to check in and, and see how you're doing. Library is great. We're going 100% uh, success. I've been hearing from Guga in Brazil. I heard from Ben in Nicaragua and heard from Carlo in the Philippines. We've never done anything this big. Everything's going good, so it's uh, it's yeah. all it's all coming together. It's like you know the countdown. It, but it shows like what we would usually do together in one place with more resources and more people. We could go from a hundred thousand people to a million people. And there's really no there's no upper end limit to what we do. I feel like if we can pull this off, if all the locations go down the way that they're planned, this can be so so huge. The stuff that's happening is because of you. <laughs> because of the choice you made to do this work and all of us are inspired by your leadership so we're just we're over the moon it will follow you to the edge of the earth let's work backwards we started off here like seven in the morning and we've been driving for like three hours. So what did they tell us about La Tigra? That it was close to the border of Guatemala. Okay. And they said it was like near this lake right here, right? Yes. Let me see. Yeah, I think the nearest town we just passed was the Sengaño, and then we just went off road like right about here, right? Yes. We must be close, we've been driving for three hours. I think we should just like continue down this road. Okay. It's still a lot of sun. Let's try and get a couple more kilometers, see what happens, no? Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Buenas. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mucho gusto. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy Manuel, bien. mucho gusto. Mariana. Ah, ¿cómo gracias, está? gracias. Bien, bien. Oiga, donde ahí tiene su familia. Ah, sí, aquí está mi familia. A ver, a ver. Vengan, familia. Hola, mucho gusto. Mariana. Hola, mucho gusto. Hola. Pues nosotros venimos de, de una empresa que se llama Ilu México. Sí. Y nosotros trabajamos con programas de energía solar específicamente para comunidades que no tienen este, luz o no tienen acceso a, a la red eléctrica. Ustedes aquí no tienen luz. No tenemos. ¿Y cómo le hacen para entonces de iluminarse en la noche? Pues nosotros preparamos o hacemos los candilitos con el diésel y, y así, ahí nos llevamos. ¿Y a cuánto le cobran el diésel? Pues a 14 pesos el, el litro. Sí, ah, está caro además. Pues está un poquito ya caro. ¿Y como cuántos litros consume a la semana o cómo? Ya, bueno, los dos litros de entre 20 y 25 días. ¿Cómo le hace usted para iluminarse en la noche? ¿Con el candil? Sí, con el candil. Nosotros empezamos un programa hace como cuatro años que se llama, como Manu les dijo, Ilu México. Y lo que hacemos es llevar luz justo a comunidades que no tienen y que a las que obviamente es muy difícil porque están muy lejos. Y si quieren, les podemos enseñar cómo funciona. Ok.
marcher de là. On va marcher de là. It was just that moment of faced with like, what am I doing with my life? Mm. You know, like, am I using my skills and talents and resources to actually like do like my highest and best calling? And mm. what is that? Because I had this idea and I didn't know what to do with it. I needed help. And Carrie was like, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, so uh, my company, Gravity Payments, uh, we have almost 150 employees. We process billions and billions of dollars of payments. But the thing that we're trying to do is stay true to that social cause that inspired us to get started. Mm -hmm. So I want to get a little bit bigger picture um, of the, the status of the business currently. Now we have 11 employees and we have an American operations manager that's down there. So you have 11 that are doing the crocheting every yeah. day? We'll show you the product. Sometimes it's easier to talk about kind of how. OK, cool. Um, so this is one of our blankets. The center of the product was made on the knitting machine. Mm -hmm. And then the edges here are crocheted. That oh, feels really good. Thank you. So they make about 125 blankets a month, more or less. And we actually just started making these baby hats. The crochet ladies could do like one to two a day, depending on how fast. What do you target? Right now, we're producing about 125 blankets a month. And we're selling about 20 to 25 blankets a month. There's obviously a gap there, and that's what we're trying to fill. It's not a huge gap um, in terms of number of units, but as a percentage, it's a humongous gap. You know, you're selling 20% of what you're producing right now. Mm -hmm. And to really sustain your business, you need to be selling more like 125, and that's what's being produced. How are you guys funding the gap between those two? So far, it's been being filled through donations and a lot of grassroots uh, donation efforts. Mm -hmm. and the problem is, Going from 10 or 20 or 30 a month to 120, that's going to take a lot of work. So what can you do in the next week <laughs> to solve that problem, or at least in the next month or two? So we're going out and we're meeting with a lot more kind of like local retailers. We actually have two meetings next week for that. We sell direct online on our website as well, which is actually where most of our sales come in through. We've been knocking on doors of bigger retailers, but have kind of come up with a stumbling block against that because we don't really know how to approach larger retailers. Operating a business like this, especially a product business, is really, really hard. So where would you like to be in a year from now? Have reached that, you know, 125 blankets a month such that we're financially sustainable. That's like always been our goal as a social enterprise to like at least make our operations sustainable um, and then be ready to kind of take that next step. You're both sacrificing and, and for me and for other people that believe in what you're doing, um, if we really believe in it, that means that we're going to sacrifice and work for it. So we have a, a big team at Gravity. We set aside about $150,000 a year, and we, we each get a stipend. And I bet a lot of them would really you know, resonate with your story and would love to, to donate. Thank you. I'd love to, uh, to give uh, my stipend my $1,500 oh, to you guys. You. And I believe in what you guys are doing. And um, I, I just think that you have the power to change people's lives, right? And what's better than that? For us to be able to go down to Lake High to an area that we've never worked, work with Femcore FM, an organization we've never worked with, and all that preparation, all the stuff that, that goes into getting it to the point for us to be able to go do this is, is you, bro. John, I'll tell you, I'll tell <laughs> you amazing. something, John. You have inspired me to tell you, no flattering, inspiring me to do this work that I'm doing, to collaborate with you and also with the peasants, with the people here in Haiti. Yeah, I mean, you've been, you've been our guy on the ground here for four years now. This is right. a big milestone for us. We have five other teams going on during the same day, globally. So Nicaragua, Brazil, uh, Indonesia, Liberia, Philippines. Haiti. Haiti. <laughs> right, right. All going on the same time, but we're coordinating it all in this one day. 
And that's a special moment for us. Exactly. On Saturday, when we arrive to Gavayon and we meet our partners there, we can do uh, our, our demonstration or our presentation. I want to do a little bit more than we've done in the past. I want to do a little bit more hands-on, almost like a clinic. Exactly. And it's almost as if you and I and the other, the other key players that we have around the world right now, we all know the secret and we're all standing on the top of a mountain and we're waving <laughs> and we're saying, hey, we got it, we got it, we understand. And, exactly. and not that many people are hearing. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if we, our voice you know, is, isn't there. So with this action on, on March 22nd, that's making that voice bigger. And then the ripple effect that that's having around the world is, you know, I mean, it's th this single day, this action is gonna benefit over 100,000 people. Y bueno, nosotros tenemos un programa que es con placas solares. Entonces, como aquí no llega la red eléctrica porque ya ve cómo está el camino y que está medio lejos, entonces lo que hace es, pues, con una placa solar se genera su propia energía y ya ustedes no tienen que estar con el candil, que me comentaba su esposo que andan con, con un candil y con eso se ilumina. Y si sí. quieren, les podemos enseñar cómo funciona. Este se llama controlador y este es como el cerebro. Y, y ese hace que todo funcione, que es muy fácil de conectar. Aquí. Esto es nada más para enseñarle que, cómo funciona ¿no? y cómo va a brillar. Lo vamos apretando así. ¿Qué pasó, niño? ¿Cómo te llamas? Alejandro. Hola. Hola, Alejandro. ¿Como tu papá? ¿Y tú? Maritza. Hola, Maritza. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Lo ves, Alejandro? Ese es para que se cargue la batería esta. Y este, donde está aquí el solecito, es para este. ¿Quieres tú pruébalo? Apriétalo, Alejandro. Y entonces prende, ¿ya viste? Poquito. A ver, otra vez, prende, apriétale otra vez. Otra vez prende. A ver, apriétale una última vez. De que está magnífico, está muy bien. Sí. Eh, siempre decimos, estamos en lugares donde, de verdad, estamos muy escasos de lo económico, ¿verdad? Si lo compran así de contado, cuesta 2.800 pesos. Pero como sabemos que es difícil, digamos, que desembolsar una cantidad así, lo que hacemos es trabajamos a través de créditos. Entonces, ustedes pueden elegir un crédito que a ustedes les convenga, que con el ahorro que tendrían en ya no consumir el, el diésel, más el tema de que los niños puedan estudiar y que ustedes ya no tienen que ir hasta allá por él, este, que ustedes evalúen si eso vale la pena para que nos paguen al mes una cantidad más pequeña y luego puedan llegar al, al total de su equipo. Ustedes este, hoy piénsenlo, eh, analicen si es algo que, que creen que les puede convenir. Pues muy bien, entonces... Este, pues de veras está guardo. muy bien la facilidad y ya mañana entonces platicamos bien. Ok, gracias. Bueno, pues estamos hablando, nos vemos aquí pronto. Muy bien. Adiós. Señora. Bueno, hasta que luego. les vaya muy bien, sale. Con permiso, hasta luego. Ándale, que les vaya bien, sale, gracias. This is a really, really exciting day for Waves for Water. First off, um, just want to say thank you, Rosario, Mikey. Fem Corey Fem, you women are amazing. And I'm so happy, so happy to have you guys as partners. Uh, the real purpose for tonight and for this presentation is to um, go over what we're going to do for World Water Day, which is tomorrow. All I want to do is help provide a missing link, a, a tool for you guys, for your program that's already helping a lot of people. So we come and we train you. Then you train tomorrow. You train the next level of people that, that know the scene, that know the community, that know all of the nuances. This is basically what Fritz and I do day in and day out, all over Haiti and all over the world. We know that this is one of the most amazing technological advancements of our time. With this, you can take the dirtiest water, you can make it <laughs> perfectly clean. Cholera, Salmonella, E. coli, typhoid, Giardia, this removes all of that. Clean water is life. That is it, period. We do this work in 17 countries. So I know at this point how important it is to have partners like you. Not me walking in saying, oh, I know what's up. I know this place. I have the solution. It's on. Just, I'm going to save you now. No way. 
the reason why I'm, I'm so passionate about this cause and, and about this uh, program is because it's solvable. This is a solvable problem. We believe clean water is a human right. We don't believe it's a privilege. Through this technology, I think it's a movement that is starting. It is bigger than us. I have seen it day in and day out, the problems of all the kids. When they come home, their lips are so dry. They are so dehydrated. The Ways for Water collaboration will not only reach 100,000 people throughout the world, but it's the start of many days to come. <laughs> well said. <laughs>
Thanks everyone for being here today. It's really special to always be back at the University of Washington and I'm really excited to talk with you guys all today about social enterprise. What if it wasn't a choice of business or mission? What if the business was the mission? What if you could make money and make a better world? That's a pretty cool idea and that's social enterprise. Starting a social enterprise is not easy, especially one that operates in a developing country. But nothing worthwhile is ever easy. So almost three years ago, I took a trip that changed my life. And my mom has always wanted to do a humanitarian type trip. We decided to go to Haiti and volunteered for two weeks at an orphanage. It turns out that one in 10 children in Haiti lives in an orphanage. And 80% of those kids have at least one living parent. That's something like 240,000 kids in Haiti living in an orphanage that have families and likely their families just can't afford to take care of them. Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. I was shocked by the unimaginable conditions that people live in. And in that moment that I, I knew that I wasn't there to give poor people money, giving someone a handout is easy. But when that handout is extinguished, there is need for another handout, a never ending cycle. But you only have to give someone a job once. And so I came home from this trip inspired. I was gonna create jobs in Haiti. Haiti baby moms in Haiti knit and crochet baby blankets and hats, which are then sold in Western markets. And today, Haiti Baby is a fairly traded artisanal baby products company that employs moms in Haiti breaking their cycle of poverty. Social entrepreneurship is passion applied. <laughs> and that desire is to make a difference in the world by using our skills and talents and resources. So why do we do all this? Because we can leave the world a better place and we can make our lives mean something. Social enterprises run more efficiently than government, they're more sustainable and creative, and they're more generous than business. So imagine what the future looks like when all enterprise is social enterprise. It's not going to be easy because social enterprise is new and it's hard and there's still a lot of things to do for us to collectively figure it out.